Hey, how's it going everybody? Cub Fan here, and welcome to episode 142 of Cub Fan's Minecraft Let's Play. Today we are out at the Guardian Farm. Just wanted to show you guys I got a bunch more of this cleared out. So if we get down here, you see we got a bunch of ores in the ground here, and we are at level 15, I believe. Yep, 15. You can also see there's multiple slime chunks uh, in this region. There pretty much has to be. I got like a stack of slime blocks from this, uh, just from passively killing all the slimes that, yeah, spawn down here. So, that's pretty cool. Also, I lit up a bunch of caves around here, um, so we can, yeah, get higher rates once we build the farm. But yeah, you can see all along back here. Yep, all this, and yeah, it keeps going on and on and on back there. I lit all that up, so that should help with the spawn rates. I should probably still do a little bit more caving around here, but these are just the caves that were exposed to the area where we dug out over here. But, uh, yeah, I think I just wanted to show you that today, and then we're going to go ahead and get back up top here, hopefully reach that top level. There we go. Get away from that slime brigade down there. And we're going to go out to the arena this episode and make some suggestions, or make some suggestions, make some uh, changes that a lot of you were suggested in the previous couple episodes. So I'm going to head back to the base and I'll meet you guys over there. Alright guys, so we're out here near the base, uh, just collecting some wool now. And we're going to use red wool for these like we did with the other banners. So I'm just collecting a lot of uh, red wool here. I've been trying to collect wool periodically throughout the time I play here. Um, so you can see here I got some chests over here. I showed this a couple episodes ago, but yeah, we got a little bit more wool here. A lot of white wool and quite a bit of red wool. So I'm going to grab some of that. And then we're going to head back. I'm going to grab some ink sacks as well, and then we'll make some of these banners. Okay, everybody. So we're going to go ahead and make our scoreboard now. You'll see we already got the letter C here, although I wonder we can probably make it a little bit more crisp just by simply surrounding it one more time. Yeah, that looks that looks a lot better. So there's our C. Now we need a U. So we'll do something like this. Something like that. Something like that. And then surround it with red dye. I think that looks alright. Yeah, should be good. Let's see how that looks. So we're going to make... Yep, and we need to do the same thing. Surround it with red dye once more. We have basically an infinite amount of red dye. Since we have yeah, all those poppies down that we're storing. So there's CU and then B. Let's see if I can get this on the first time. We'll need the side. And then, let's see, we'll need the top. We'll need this side. It's going to look kind of like an 8, though, if I do that. Hmm. I'll tell you what. Let's get a cauldron out. Do I have a cauldron here? No. Let's get a cauldron out. This is why I need a... This is why I need, a, like, an art shop or a banner shop type thing. So, yeah, we'll put that down. We'll get some water so we can erase this part. I guess we'll do a lowercase b instead of an uppercase b, because the uppercase b, I think, has to look like an 8. There we go. And then get rid of the most recent edit by right-clicking. There we are. Okay. Let's try this instead. Let's try lowercase b. So we'll do something along the bottom. And then in the center. Like that. And, uh, hmm. Hmm. That's not going to cut it. Um, hmm. Let me think about this, and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody. So, I figured out how we can do a capital B, actually. So, we're going to need a different colored banner. We're going to need a black banner. So, we'll get some black wool here. Make that happen. Then we're going to need a notch apple. So, we'll get out eight gold blocks. Perfect. Get out an apple, which we have plenty of, from the tree farm. And yeah, we'll place down this, get the golden apple, there we go. And let's see here, so we want to 
We got all right, we got some of this, so we're gonna go ahead and first place down a red it's called a red thing, but it's actually the Mojang logo. So we'll have a red thing there, then we'll have a black stripe over here. So it's gonna be like a sort of like a crescent type thing there. Almost like it looks like a red banana. And then we'll need some vines. We're gonna do a red border, sort of like a zigzag border, like that. I think that's right. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. And then we'll need to do the leftmost border. So you can see now, it's starting to look a little bit like a B shape in a way. <laughs> and then we'll do, I think the uh, border like that. And then the border one more time, but we need some more roses, which we're gonna get from down here, not up here. Let's see, we don't we don't have any pearls on us right now. Got to pick some of those up from the uh, bedroom dispenser area. But we'll come down here. We got plenty of roses, so yeah, four at least four double chests worth of these poppies. So yeah, not <laughs> hurting for any red dye at all. So that's good news. Uh, this is open. Let's close that. All right. Let's get back up here. And we'll make all this into dye. There we go. And yeah, we'll go ahead and do the uh, border here. There we are. That's two times, and that should be it. So this will be... It'll be sort of a strange B. But... Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So there we go. So that's cub, and then we need to make the same type of banners for mobs, and then of course get the numbers going as well. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so out here at the arena now, let's go ahead and put down these banners. I'm just going to teleport over there with the ender pearl. Whoa, a little close there. Alright, so what I want to have is we'll have something like this. So we'll have that thing right there in the center. We'll have the score. Uh, Two-digit two score. We can expand it to three-digit uh, on either side of this dash here. And then we'll have something like a space and then M O B and then S. So there's mobs. And then we'll have, like I said, two digit score, a space, and then cub right here for our scoreboard, or my scoreboard, I should say. Uh, U, B. There we go. And as far as the numbers go, we can just simply copy what we have from um, these up here. So we're going to go ahead and do those, do that right now. So we'll go ahead and grab this zero here think yeah that's the maximum I can have on there so just do that and we'll need one of those actually we'll get two three they should stack yeah four there we go okay let's go ahead and place these down so obviously we gotta start at zero zero and then we'll we'll clone these as needed so, we'll put these down here, those down there. There we go. Okay, so we got the scoreboards up now. I really like those. Now we're going to do some testing here. And we're going to see exactly how many uh, zombies it takes to um, take on one golem. So, I'm guessing it's probably going to be around five. Reason being is that zombies have uh, 20 hearts of health and the golems have 100. But we'll just have to see. It could be, since the zombies are wearing iron armor and have iron swords, um, it could be a little bit less or maybe a little bit more if the golems uh, keep the zombies off of them. But I want to see if we can get sort of a fair fight uh, baseline here. So what we're going to do, going to turn on zombie spawning. I'm going to toss a helmet down there. And we're going to arm some of these zombies. So let's get down here. There we go. That guy's able to, yeah, get armor on him. 
And he should drop down. And then eventually make his way down here. Nice. Okay, and then of course we're going to arm him. He's going to drop down. There he goes. And yeah, we'll keep doing that until we get ten of them. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to battle test number one. In this corner, we have six ironclad zombies weighing in at approximately 700 pounds. In this corner, we have one iron golem weighing in at two metric tons. And we're going to unload this golem here. And then we will let these zombies out. So, like I said, six zombies against one iron golem. We'll see how it goes. And yeah, let's start this battle. Dun 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 dun. Why is the zombie gate not open? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to battle test number one. We have fixed the technical issues and are ready for this battle. Uh, just a quick note, this is not going to count for the uh, scores on the sides because... Um, yeah, this is just a test battle to sort of get the balance right. So, release the golem. And he walks further into his his cage. Oh, no, he's coming out. Okay. And finally, release the zombies. Dun 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 dun. So this is six on one. Let's see how see how this turns out here. All right, they're sort of overwhelming him. Yeah, they're really overwhelming him. Oh, this guy's coming toward to me. Don't want that. Wow, okay. All of them survived. Holy smokes. That was unexpected. Yeah. Wow. Alright, so we'll have to uh, take that into consideration. We'll try, um... We'll try four, I guess, next time. I really did not anticipate that, though. Wow. Kind of shocked. Alright, and yeah, we'll have have the carts clean all this stuff up, and we'll try another test. Okay, guys, test number two. We got four ironclad zombies against one iron golem, so let's jump up here. And yeah, let the battle begin. So, golem, he's free to go. Zombies are still following me. Let me get out of their range. They track the golem instead. That sometimes does happen. You do have to do that occasionally. So we'll just circle around out here. Hopefully not get hit by a skeleton. Come on back in. Golems versus zombies. Banners greets us. And... They should be... Yep, they're tracking the, zo the golem now. So... Release the zombies. Here we go. <laughs> One guy's missing pants for some reason. But yeah, here we go. Let's see if the golem sees them. No, he doesn't see them for some reason. This is going to be interesting. Yep, they're backing him into a corner. Let's get a better view here. He's backed into a corner. Oh, one guy saw me. That's not good. Oh, nope, they took him out. Wow, okay. Dang, okay. <laughs> that's, in, that's impressive. They were pretty low on health, though, but... I would say the ratio is probably... Somewhere in the region of, yeah, one or three go three zombies every for every one golem. So that's that's a lot higher than I expected. I thought it would be like five zombies for one golem or something like that. But yeah, wow. All right, we'll have the cart collect some of that stuff. We'll get rid of some of these other zombies that want to join the party. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do one more final test battle. Okay, everyone, so now we have three zombies against one iron golem. So let's go ahead and start this battle here. See what happens. I'm guessing the golem will win this time. I'll be kind of surprised if that's not the case, but yeah, here we go. And the golem, there, the golem sees him there. Okay. Seems like it's, they're getting a little overwhelmed. It's pretty close this time. Mmm... Golem looks like it's won. Yep. Okay, so the Golem won that. Nope. Nope. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, that was close. Okay. So I think the Golem won that time. 
Uh, obviously, they got him one that time. Let's see. Yeah, he's one hit kill there. So that is the ratio we need. So three zombies for one iron golem is about ideal. Now, it might get a little bit more complex once we have multiple golems because the zombies sometimes target only one. So they could split differently. Like only one could go after one golem and then like five or six could go after uh, the other golem. But I think that's about the ratio we'll start off with at least. Um, so, now I think we're going we're to go ahead and do a battle. We'll do four golems against um, 12 zombies. Alright everybody, so, welcome to the first official mob battle here. Uh, we have four iron golems against 12 zombies. So, we are going to start this in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Begin. And they're off. Quite a force coming out of there. Got one golem taking heavy damage already. Two of them are just sort of hanging back there. This could be a quick battle for the zombies, I feel. Uh, if the other two don't see him in time. Yep. Oh, now they see him. Yep, I think the zombies have this. Although two of them are coming toward me. Yep. They're going down. Golems are going down, no doubt. Yep. Nope, this guy's holding out still. Now they're all going for him. He's done. He's toast. Sayonara. Okay. Zombies win that first one. Somehow one of them got into this area over here. I'm not sure how that happened, but... Yep, zombies win the first one, so we'll put it up on the board. Okay, so let's go ahead and change the zombie score here from 0 to 1. Kabam. Okay. There we have it. Zombies are up now. One to the golems, zero. And, yeah, we'll continue to sort of play around with it a little bit. It seems like the zombies have a huge advantage because they attack in groups. So I think just, uh, just that alone gives them a pretty big advantage over the golems who sort of go it alone. What's up, Skelly? How you doing? Get out of here. I'm trying to record here. Power one, not bad. All right, so yeah, uh, we'll uh, we'll continue to sort of play around with this. We'll experiment with some of the buffs, see how that affects it, and yeah, a lot more battles will take place here, including uh, when we partake in some battles in the near future. All right, everybody. So back here at the base now, and besides some of the testing we did over there at the arena, I also want to do a quick project over there this episode. Uh, but it will require me to get some more glowstone because we need some more redstone lamps. Um, so I'm going to go to the nether and do that. I'm also going to put away this polished andesite for right now. I'm going to go and grab some more ender pearls. And yeah, I'll go to the the nether. going to need like 20 stacks of glowstone. Uh, not just because of this project, but because of other projects coming up as well. So we'll get some ender pearls and yeah, we'll head off. Alright everybody, so we are back from the nether now, and you can see we got some glowstone up here. I already crafted up a few more redstone lamps, uh, but we might need a couple more here. We're also going to need these repeaters, torches, comparators, hoppers, and dispensers. And so let's go ahead and craft up a few more here. So just split this up like that. That should be decent. If we need more, we can come back and get some more uh, glowstone to make more glowstone lamps. We'll need some redstone here as well. Uh, let's go ahead and actually, uh, let's see, we'll make up some more dispensers here, so get some more redstone out. We'll need to make some bows, just like that, so we'll make, I don't know, another seven, eight dispensers or so. There we go. And then we'll need our cobblestone around the outside. Cobblestone around the outside. And then, yeah, make some more of these. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and go out to the mob farm, get some gunpowder, because we'll need that. And then I'll be back with the project we're going to do at the arena. Okay, everyone, so we're back at the arena now. We got all the resources we need, I think, and we're ready to start our build. So what we're going to build is a combination light display and fireworks launcher. So the light display is going to go around the outside. Uh, basically, we'll have redstone lamps uh, bordering the outside of the arena. And we'll be able to send a pulse of light down each side. So we'll be able to send one down the left side, 
then one down the right side, then one down the left side, and all the way around the outside to the front. And then with the fireworks display, it'll be independently controlled from the light display. And we'll have a button over there uh, that we can push to manually trigger a fireworks display that goes from the front to the back. So it'll be like firework, 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 all the way to the back. Uh, and the same on the right hand side. So it should be pretty cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with this build. Um, I went ahead and put down a lever right there. And it's pretty low profile from where we stand, so it's not going to be too noticeable. But we're going to come down here. We'll place a block down like this. I think that's in the right spot. Let me double check. Yeah, just like that. And we're going to build a silent hopper timer here. This is what's going to control the... Um, yeah, this will control... Whoops, the light display. So we need something like that. And we'll go ahead and place... Not a hopper in there. Let's place one cobblestone in there. Very nice. Then we need to go ahead and place down... Yeah, you can see some blocks down there. Go ahead and place uh, some blocks right next to it. And then some blocks right over here. We'll place some comparators just like this. You can see it going back and forth there. Then we'll place some blocks in front of that. Just like that. And we'll get rid of these two on the bottom here because we don't need them. There we go. And we'll place some torches. We need to get place some torches right there and we'll get two more out. So we'll place torches down like that. And then we'll place two hoppers facing into each other on top of the comparators. Just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and place um, 16 items in here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There we are. And now we need two more comparators right here. So there and there. And then we'll put blocks on top of there. And then torches on top of there. So now we should see that pulse. So yeah, you can draw a signal out of this. That's what that means. So we'll have yeah, that like that. So you'll see this pulses every once in a while here. And then that side will pulse. So there it is, pulse, and then this right side should also pulse. And this is what we're going to use to get our signal from, yep, there it is, from, uh, yeah, this uh, silent hopper timer to the redstone lamps. So, cool, that's done. Okay, so now we have our silent hopper timer done. Now we just need to place down um, all of our lamps and do all the timings and stuff. I only want this to be about too wide, so we're going to go with something like this. Uh, so we'll have blocks along here, and then we'll have redstone lamps all along the outside like this. So it'll be a constant stream of redstone lamps along the outside. And that's because the profile of the stadium is low. Uh, in some places it's only a block thick. And I didn't want this to come out more than two blocks from the side here. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what it's going to look like there. And I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and place redstone just like this, and then over here. And then we'll have some compare or some repeaters here on five ticks, and then just another dust like that. Should we, sh we should see these two light up, and then these three light up. So, yeah, like that. And it's going to be like a moving beam of light that goes all the way around the side. So that sort of gives you the idea. So we'll have another one here, and then... Yeah, another lamp, so we're just going to have lamps all along like this. And then the fireworks display will go right alongside it like this. And so we'll have the dispensers facing upward like that. And we'll have these every, probably every three blocks or so. And that'll, again, come around from that side. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead and wire this up now, and I'll be back once we are done. Okay, everybody, so, got it done now. Took a lot more resources than I was anticipating. Uh, we actually used double the redstone lamps that I had uh, previously, so, yeah, it took an insane amount of redstone to make this, actually. And, yeah, you can see the pulse going around here. Uh, about three to four lights light up each time through. So, yeah, it's pretty cool there. We can vary the timing, of course, based on the uh, number of 
uh, blocks we put in that silent hopper timer back there. But yeah, let's go ahead and go down and take a look closer look here. Hopefully we can hit it. Yeah, okay. So yeah, these two lines here are independent of one another. And yeah, we should see the pulse come over. You'll see that uh, whenever a pulse comes through, it won't activate anything in this dispenser. So we'll put like, let's put, let's put a firework in there. But you'll see, since we alternated these repeaters and these uh, pieces of redstone dust, dispensers don't activate. Uh, but they do activate when you hit the button, which is going to go right here in this block. And so we should see, yep, there we go. Boom. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and fill up these dispensers here. Um, there's, I think, 46 in total, I believe. 46 or 47. And they're all spaced pretty evenly, as you can see. I used the block here as well to save on redstone a little bit. And yeah, I think I think I'm liking it. Um, I also did something back here. I sort of hid the uh, silent hopper timer back here. So I put it in like an andesite case, and I added this little thing on the front here. It's not much, but it's better than nothing, I guess. So this just shows uh, what side the pulse is going to. So that's kind of cool, how it switches in between the right and the left. And so, yeah, it's like anticipating it coming from this side, and then once it gets right to here, boom, it switches to that. So, I thought that was pretty neat. Get out of here, zombie. Nobody likes you. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and fill up the uh, fireworks dispensers here, and we'll see how it looks uh, at night with the fireworks. Okay, and just a couple other things uh, real quick before we do this fireworks show. Everything is loaded up now. Uh, but I just wanted to point out this is now uh, just one continuous ring, so it just keeps going around in a ring. Uh, it doesn't stop or anything at any point like I planned before. And also it defaults uh, to the on state, which you see now, but you can also turn it off just by flicking this lever down. And if you do that, let me see if I can get this pearl throw correct here. Maybe? Yeah. If you do that, you'll see that the entire thing should turn on. Yeah, so all these lights will turn on and they won't turn off. So, yeah, that's one other pretty cool feature. The whole thing just stays on. Um, so we can also just have it stay on if we want to, which is cool. Um, all right. Uh, you can also sort of see just the very tops of the redstone torches, which, which I think is pretty cool as you look around the stadium. So that's, that's pretty neat. I'm pretty happy with it. The only thing I might change is let me just put this back and put some glass back here there we go the only thing I might change is that you can see the silent uh, hopper timer over there so I might lower that down one so you can't see it at all I uh, just see the two torches um, so yeah I might do that um, but yeah let's go ahead and do this fireworks show make sure it's working properly I think it should be so here we go Three, two, one. Nice. Nice. It's on the other side as well. Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. I am happy with that. Definitely very nice. Um, yeah, adds a lot of functionality without adding a lot of space to the arena. So, very happy with that. And with that, I think we're going to go ahead and call that an episode, guys. I'm going to head back to the base, and then I'll be back with the highlighted channel. Alrighty everyone, down here in the mineshaft now, and it's time for today's highlighted channel. And the highlighted channel of the day is Vic Brow the best. I'm just going to call him Vic Brow though. So Vic Brow last time left a comment saying that I should go ahead and make some hot air balloons around my base. I thought that was a fantastic idea. I have an idea already that I want to do with those. Uh, so it might happen in the next few episodes. So thank you for the idea Vic Brow. This is your mineshaft. Let's see how you do against the other competitors. Okay, everyone. So Vic Brow came in second place today on the diamond leaderboards. 
And we're only going to do the diamond leaderboards from here on out because mining other things other than uh, diamond and redstone are starting to become irrelevant. Um, so yeah, basically just going to do only the diamond leaderboard. Plus it makes sense to have just one uh, master leaderboard rather than two. So uh, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Uh, please do make sure and leave comments and suggestions in the uh, comment section below there. And yeah, stay tuned for a channel update video coming relatively soon. We're going to be playing some new games pretty soon here, as well as more Minecraft. And yeah, i got some cool stuff coming up in this world for you. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. This has been Cup Fan. Goodbye.